Hey, what's all this then about old Carlo Ancelotti moving football friends then, Ross? What's going on here? Football so a multiple banter? time Champions League winner, Tom, arrived at Everton, who I are not him. at that kind of standard. Um, and he is now being touted for a move back to Real Madrid where he once managed and who are quite considerably higher in the football pyramid than Everton are. So it's a shock that he went to Everton. It's now a shock the timing that he appears to be going to Real Madrid. Is it just a case that he doesn't look like, like living in the northwest of England? Does he, is he just know, not got I, on? Honestly, Tom, the, the, the difference between Liverpool and Madrid in terms of climate, in terms of quality of living, in terms of everything, it's, it's got to be the same. Surely. Well, you thought so. It's basically the same thing. Living in living in the northwest and Madrid can't mm. see an issue. Uh, more football banter like this in my brand new weekly podcast. I don't know what's going on either, Keith. Uh, that's on wherever you get your podcast from later on today. But for now, here is your wrestling news, and there is the end of the worst intro to the news <gasps> oh, in the history of shut the news. up. This is free. Shut up. A Raw star has been asked by management to change their look. We have an injury update on The Miz. And a WWE Hall of Famer is returning in a new role, possibly. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Turns out Mansoor writes a column for ArabNews.com and he's been giving us an update on what's been happening with him. It's been a weird one since Mansoor got the big call up to Monday Night Raw. You all right, mate? <sighs> Still too soon, Tom. Was it 49 <laughs> matches? The biggest streak in the history, and I include Undertaker in that, the history of professional wrestling came to an end on an inconsequential episode of Monday Night Raw. They just, <gasps> they, they dropped a you-know-what with that because they could have had some fun with that. They could have riffed off the fact that Mansoor, you know, the, the Saudi Arabian Goldberg remains undefeated. <laughs> but no, DQ loss, and that is it. And then he's kind of not been seen, really, since then. Odd appearance on main event or what have you. Uh, but in his column for Arab News, he was talking about how WWE are returning back to live events. He's talked about his debut on Monday Night Raw. And... Um, he says in this article as well, we are working on my image, new music, new logos, etc. Because now I have been introduced, it is important to establish my character on the show. To do all of that on a huge stage as Raw is a little intimidating, but very exciting. So we're getting a new look Mansoor by the looks of things. Interesting for me, Tom, because it's clear that whoever puts on the shows in Saudi Arabia is a massive fan of Mansoor just because they come from that part of the world. So, if WWE change up Mansoor's look drastically, will that annoy the people who put on the shows in Saudi Arabia? Or possibly, could we have a dual gimmick for Mansoor? In America, he has one gimmick in a mask. Then he goes back home to Saudi Arabia. He takes off the mask and, uh, hey, 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 it's the hey. hometown area. It's the reverse Mr. America. I am a Saudi Arabian. <laughs> yes, I'm fine with that. We'll keep tabs on what Mansoor's up to. New look for him coming very, very soon and possibly another DQ loss to Seamus. Oh. Yay. Uh, update for you on The Miz suffering quite the injury at WrestleMania Backlash in that match involving zombies. Uh, we was it a was it a, it was an ACL, wasn't it? His ACL was torn so, during yeah, that in one. the process of being eaten alive by zombies, one of the zombies obviously went a bit too deep. You know, didn't just take the flesh, took the muscles and the tendons as well, and ripped off that their ACL. Oh, or well, something. <laughs> the ACL been eaten by Scotty Two Zombie, apparently. <laughs> uh, we have an update on the Mrs. Injury from our mate Dave Meltzer from off of the Wrestling Observer, don't we, Russ? Strap yourselves in, everybody. Here's a direct quote from Dave Meltzer's <laughs> mouth. He didn't have major surgery, so it looks like it was a partial tear and not a full period. So that's a lot better. That's not going to be like nine months off or seven months off. It's probably going to be a lot quicker. If he had if he had surgery at this point in time, he would have had crutches by now. So Dave Meltzer just looking at the lack of crutches on the Miz and coming to a conclusion, kind of. Dave writes like jazz happens. <laughs> <laughs> God love him. Uh, the, 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 the Miz, yeah. So basically, The Miz, not, not as badly injured as many people believed him to be, which is reassuring because this is, this is the first time that he's ever faced potentially a, a, a big injury because he's done well all his career to, to keep going. And it's something he's even incorporated in promos and stories, how like he's like the one guy on the roster who's never suffered injury, never taken time off. Uh, hopefully his time off is short and sweet. Uh, let's move on to AEW. 
AEW, Dr. Britt Baker, by now you know, the brand spanking new AEW Women's World Champion. A good fit, isn't it, Ross? It was the right result, wasn't it, Tom? Hikaru yeah. Shida, whenever she's been given the chance on TV, I thought she's, she's knocked it out of the park. The matches speak for themselves. But now just the sort of the, the gimmick change that Britt Baker's got, well, I say the gimmick change, the sort of character shift is more appropriate, I guess, that she's gone through over the past year. This, she, des- she deserves it, doesn't she? Now it's time to make her the, the focal point of the division and hopefully it gets featured more on Dynamite from week to week. And the focal point of the division was to- focusing on the division during the AEW Double or Nothing Media Scrum. Uh, asked about a representation for the women's division, she said, the division as a whole, I think most of the criticism at the time was TV time. None of us, almost none of us, had any TV experience. We were all learning and growing together as a division in front of your eyes. And I think that's a kind of a bit of our charm and why people are jumping on the bandwagon now. Because it's like, oh man, I remember when Bit Baker couldn't hold a microphone. And now look at her so i think that's why a lot of people are along for the ride i think yeah, there is something to that but i i think the issue was that they needed more depth to the women's division and storylines didn't just involve the women's championship you needed stuff underneath it that you know, in the same way that men the men's divisions have storylines which aren't based around titles why not the women's division as well baker and thunder rosa was a great example of that just a phenomenal feud that didn't need a belt it was more just like in terms of ladies' segments as well. There was always there was a period of time where it was always the, the segment just before the main event match. It was always a five-minute women's match. And that was it. That was what you got on AEW Dynamite from week to week to week. Uh, obviously, the timings in live TV production, that has got to be one hell of a skill that has, has got to be learned double quick in sort of where AEW find themselves today. So I, I can see where she's coming from from that point of view. But to remedy that, why couldn't we see sort of pre-recorded stuff that was chopped down into a certain time slot and then put into the show? So... Hopefully we just see more. I just think that's what we need, isn't it, from the, the women's division in AEW? It's just more TV time, somehow. Uh, the <laughs> four, the, yeah, they, they, because they, they've got so much TV now. Like You see a lot of women's matches features on Dark and Dark Elevation, but I think the push is, well, hang on, why aren't some of these on Dynamite now? Mm. Why aren't we getting these moved over to Dynamite? We'll, we'll see. Now Britt Baker's there. You've got a really strong focal point. Uh, and, and again, not a disrespect to Hikaru Shida whenever she was on TV top quality stuff but i think with Britt baker there's there's certainly a more organic lead lead role there in in Britt baker as the champion so i'm for that she actually commented on twitter not long ago about an incident that took place just before double or nothing involving uh, willie urbina the now former aew spanish announcer there was uh, some racial comments made by willie urbina so uh, of a uh, inappropriate nature during the commentary during the break of dynamite the live mic was still on and caught them this led to Abina being released from his duties. Sheeda comments on this saying, I don't want to talk about this. Didn't want to talk about this before my big day. So let me tell you now, I don't give an SH1T what other people say about my race because I love it and I'm proud of it. And because I know which is fool. I don't even feel anger. So don't need to, you don't need to worry about me. Thank you. So Sheeda taking the high road on this one and moving on with things. Um, that whole situation was, was, whilst uncomfortable, handled very swiftly, wasn't it, Ross? It was the right way it was handled as well. It's only one outcome should have been possible, and that's what exactly what we saw. So all credit to, to Tony Khan and everyone involved in AEW for acting like they did. It's, uh, yeah, it was a, a weird one, wasn't it? It was a very odd situation. In terms of acting properly, there is an opportunity here for WWE to act very cool with this. Uh, as backstage on Raw last night, a WWE Hall of Famer uh, may have been getting uh, their feet under the table for a new role. Who are we talking about, Ross? Molly Holly. PW Insider revealing that Molly Holly was backstage at this week's Raw and she's trying out for a producer role. And I tell you what, in this world, Tom, there's some people who need an arm around them. There's some people who need to be berated and shouted at. I'm one of those people who need to the arm around and molly holly is exactly the kind of producer i would i'm speaking like i know her i don't know her from anybody else (laughs) but she seems like the nicest human being in the world and somebody who if you are a wrestler and maybe you don't have a match that vince mcmahon or somebody doesn't like she's the exact kind of person i presume i would want with an arm around me going ross it's going to be fine here's what you could have done better in the nicest way possible some people do well with a carrot some do well with a stick you're a carrot guy aren't you i I think we're both i think we're both i I love a carrot mate i think we're both carrot guys i think we're, we're we're we don't we're not ones that 
work well by being shouted at. Mm. It'd be more a case of what was the I was always taught whenever I when and I and I've learned it to the point where I had it done to me and now I do it to others when I do coaching. The um the poo sandwich routine from <laughs> coaching. This? So it's and and there's a little tip if you're a coach. Um, so what you do is you you say something really nice about what they've done. Uh -oh. You then say the problem, <laughs> but then you end on something nice. <laughs> but the poo, I presume, has to be laid on it in a nice in a nice fashion. You can't just get a fistful of poo and just smack it in the middle of the bread, can you? It needs to be no, 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 delicately no, you... spread with a knife. Or... So it, you know, it would be like you know. If Adam was to do one on this, he'd come to me and go, hey, Tom, really great that you covered news today. Thank you so much for coming in and doing the news stuff. Really great. Um, I didn't think the intro was very good. Did The podcast thing didn't land, didn't make much sense. But you know what? Everything else I've got no problem with. That's Poo Sandwich. That's Poo Sandwich criticism there for you. If you've ever been spoken to oh. like that by a boss, you've had a Poo Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Some top tips from Tom's coaching. There's a podcast about... No, there isn't. There definitely isn't. I'm too busy doing the football one. More more news later. Oh, actually, I'll drop, I will drop. want to drop this in a little plug for, because, Ross, you shared this over the weekend. You know that wild powerbomb that happened at the wrestling that went mm. everywhere? Mm -hmm. The one where they get where, where we see somebody get powerbombed off a ring apron and through uh, tape, through wooden, wooden blocks on the floor, wooden boards on the floor. Yes. Well... It was a match between MV Young and Harlow O'Hara. And very late last night, I had a lovely chat on the phone with Harlow O'Hara. She was the one that took that move. She's and alive? <laughs> she's very much alive. And you know what? The story behind that move uh, is actually really incredible. Like, there's a real, there's a story of redemption and comeback from that. And you can hear the planning of that move, how they reacted to the reception, uh, and some of the people that reached out when that move went down and went viral. That's on the news podcast right now. Harlow, Harlow O'Hara was a, a genuine joy to chat to, and you can hear it on the podcast feed right now. There's a little cheap plug. I'll drop that in. So without spoiling too much, did that all go to plan or did it go wrong? It very much went to plan. Wow. In, in every sense, in every sense of the word, it very much went to plan. A lot of people think that it was something that that, that hit badly. Not not at all. It all went as it was meant to go and and a little bit better, actually. Wrestlers are so weird, aren't they? Imagine just going, <laughs> I want to do this willingly. I want you to pick me up and slam me off the apron through a wooden table onto a wooden floor. Yeah, that's what exactly. That. That's the real conversation. <laughs> <laughs> real conversation. Anything you want to cheaply plug while we're here? Uh, I've just booked a straight to hell with someone you know quite well, Ace Trainer Liam. Uh, Ace Trainer Liam. Um, I'll be doing a one with him on Thursday. I'm sure it's going to go two hours and forty eight hundred <laughs> million, million minutes, like yours did. The Desert Island Grabs you did on the on the on the uh, the podcast feed. So yeah, shooting that on Thursday, and I guess that's it. I've got a new video series coming out the weekend. That's all the plugs done, I think. <gasps> Ooh, spicy youtube.com yeah. slash cultaholic i.e. where you are now stay yes. here <laughs> stay safe have a good day love you bye carlo ancelotti bless you <laughs>